Hey guys, Stuart Pidlong. Mr. Target Citizen, hope you're well. It's been a long day. I just ruined my son. I uh, brought him a new toy home. 1961 Ford Galaxy 500. And it is absolutely rough as a corn cob. But I've got all the stainless for it. Got a set of wheels and tires to go on it right now. The set I bought last night. Another set of Krager SS. This door right here won't open, so I'll have to take the door panel off on it, grease it, get it all done. No motor, no transmission, and that's good too. Getting ready to jack this bumper up here, fix it. Uh, quarter panels, doors is gone, quarters is about gone on it. Back bumper, I think, is got one dent in it, which I can get that out. Deck lid's in great shape. The glass is all really good on it. The front's the worst glass where it's fogged a little bit, but it's still, it's a very expensive glass. Dash uncut and perfect. Perfect uncut dash. That Bill Baxi, ain't that cool? So, uh, a lot of WD-40, a lot of WD-40 is going to take. Floorboard's gone. But the frame is solid as it can be. Solid frame. All the jack, all the body bolts, body mounts are good on it. Body mounting bolts are good. Uh, but yeah, this is it. First order of business. Jack his front end up. See if I can get the wheels off of it. Get the get this Craigers on it. Jack his bumper. Fix it. Put the Craigers on the front. I'll have to redo everything. But the main thing right now is to get it looking good. So we're gonna get some Comet, some Purple Power, the pressure washer, and we're gonna start scrubbing. And you will see this thing shine like no other. See, I've even got fins. My car got fins, little miniature fins. Ain't that cool? This has got the prettiest rear end on any car I've ever seen. It's pretty, got little, like, it looks like rock, afterburners from Rocket Sisters of Space Age when this car was out. Um, I think there's a, a piece that goes back here that's like the grill too. I need to dig around and look. But all parts for this car can be purchased, can be sourced. They reproduce all this stuff. So man can rebuild this car with uh, floor pans, 200 bucks. Uh, just replace the lower door rocker panels. You can get all the rocker panels, quarter panels you can buy. All this stuff is, is uh, all this can bought, be bought. Got a Ford 9 inch. That's about $500 worth of, the rear end's worth about five. Glass is worth about eight. Trunk lid's worth four. Uh, the hood needs a little work on the inside. The hood's, well the front clip here is worth about eight to nine hundred dollars. The grill right there is worth about six because it's actually perfect. Um, yeah, look at him. Hold on, it's not focusing. Wow, it ain't focusing at all, son. Let's see if I can get up close and do it. Okay, there you go. Look at it, he's so excited. Is that the oldest car you sit in, boy? Look, is it really? You didn't sit in my 36 Chevy when I had it? I guess not. This is back when they had a, but it had trunks and back glasses and back seats. So I got a whole box of parts too. So that's just extra money. Those parts are for 62, but this is classic American muscle. Uh, he advertised it as a 390 four speed. I've still got to run the numbers on it. It very well could have been a 390. As far as four speed, uh, I doubt it because I'm thinking it was probably just three speed on the column. But it's got all the clutch and that's good it's good it's a factory uh three or four speed that's awesome because that means i can put a i can put a hot rod transmission in and shift some gears bang some gears so the problem is if i want to be blasphemous and blasphemous what i mean is in car culture it's considered affordable and common for people to take Chevrolet motors and put it into Ford automobiles. Why? Because Chevys are cheap. You can find a Chevy 350 anywhere and everywhere. Cheap. So you just put a Chevy 300, 350 or 400 in here with a transmission, boom, you're running and driving in less than a week's time. And I just so happen to have 
in my camper a 400 small block with 40,000 original miles on that and the transmission. It also has a set of high performance Magna Flow exhaust on my camper. My camper ain't gonna go anywhere. So it's more than likely I'm gonna start parting that thing out where it sits and just keep renting it as it is. But in the meantime, if I can hopefully sell this boat, and like I said, this is gonna be a project to sell. I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep trying to sell it, and every time I add money to it, I'm, the price is gonna go up. But Hopefully the boat sells this week. I gotta put the inside together here in a minute. I've been working on Sweetie's car, put brakes on it. So the goal right now is to jack that bumper up. We're gonna get the Comet and the Purple Power and we're gonna start rubbing her down. But hopefully this thing sells this week and then I can go buy an old junk car truck that's got a 390 and a four speed in it. And then boom, I'm ready for the races. Drop it straight in, got the drive shaft in the back to put new joints in it. So all I gotta do is just get it running. All the brakes is rotting off of this car. The last time it was on the road was in 1973. Cool. So uh, that's the next project. 1961 Ford Galaxy. Have a good day. Hey you guys, Drew Pidlong. Most targeted citizen second video. That one filmed sideways for some unknown reason. Anyway, um, everybody's wanting updates, I guess. I shared the picture of the car when I got it off the rollback here a couple hours ago. Um, pleasant surprises all the way around. I'm going to go through the story one more time. I thought my Ranger needed to sit. Son, keep putting stuff up. Keep putting stuff up, please. My styrofoam, the buckets, everything on the car, everything, all the tools that need to go inside. Your tools, my tools, our tools. So, last night... Um, this whole time I've been thinking I need a set of wheel adapters to put the wheels on my Bronco. There's near, nearly three wheels that I purchased here a couple, a couple weeks back. Um, so I bought a set of wheel adapters for them. 40 bucks for two, which is a steal. That's an absolute steal. So I got them home, went to go put them on, and I didn't have the right lug nuts. I said, golly gee, this sucks. I ain't going to be put my wheels on again. I was so excited. So then I just went ahead, drug the wheels over here, and went to put it on. Did not even realize, it felt so silly, that the wheels that I purchased a month ago were actually unilug wheels. So I didn't even need wheel adapters. Didn't even need them. So last night I went ahead and put the wheels on my Ranger and it looked so good. I um, mean, I showed you a preview the other week with the wheels just sitting beside it, but the wheels looked so good. It just, it just, uh, Tina came outside and she was just shocked. She said, oh my God, a set of wheels can do that much? Yes, a set of wheels can make that big a difference. I don't suggest anyone go out and purchase a set of wheels. It's a big waste of money. All they do is go to ground. Uh, but they can help when you sell the vehicle. So, the plan today was I had three good tires on those wheels and one bad one, one bad one had a blowout. They were like it when I bought it. Uh, went and got this car in the midst of waiting for that car to show up here at home. I had to get a uh, record service to get it. I was going to borrow a trailer and get it on, do all that, but it would have just taken me by myself. I don't like borrowing people's things because then you're responsible for it and I don't want to put that much more wear and tear on my Bronco as it is. So, went and got two tires mounted on the Ranger. They did not have in stock the lug nuts that Krager takes. Krager takes a, it's got two different size shanks. It's got a small shank at the bottom that goes onto the wheel stud and a bigger shank on the outside. They didn't have those, so I had to buy those lug nuts. I had to order them. They'll be in Thursday or Friday. So, get back home. Wasn't able to do anything. I just went ahead and took all those four or three Craig wheels back off my Ranger and put the ones back on it that I had on there, see? So it looks the same as it did before. But I did at least rotate the tires. Uh, started working on the Ford. Sit over here looking at it, dreaming about it, thinking about what was going on. Told Mace, I said, hey man, drag the jack around here. Well, I, well, I already had the jack around here for working on Tina's car. That's another mystery. Um, with her car, uh, on this side, it's supposed to have floating pins for the caliper, and one of the pins is locked in, so it sits the caliper in there crooked. Uh, nobody's got that bracket. It's a part I'm going to have to order, so I'll probably have to order that tonight and wait until Thursday or Friday for it to come in. So then I'll have that bracket, but as of right now, she's got new brake pads on the front of her car. They weren't even halfway gone, so I, I don't understand where her brake pedal's going. Uh, I believe somebody has cut my brake line on the front of my car on my truck. It's leaking on the driver's side. I've, I've been feeling it get softer and softer, so I've got to work on that soon. But anyway, to the uh, car at hand. I told Mason, go ahead, grab the jack, threw the jack under it, jacked it up, pulled them old, ugly, flat wheels and tires off the car, grabbed the Kragers, the, the two special ones, the older ones I told you about, the, the rare ones, they are unilug. Put them right on front, fit perfectly. 
Uh, I still got to um, grind down and, and sand smooth the brake hubs and then paint them black, but they fit perfectly. I went to the back and they wouldn't fit because they weren't Unilug. But thank you, Lord. I purchased a set of wheel adapters last night. Put them on there and the wheels fit great. Uh, I've got a little issue on the back because the, the tires are too, too wide because of the offset. So I'll have to get a skinny set of tires, but this is what my little uh, Ford looks like now. Is that not amazing, the difference that a set of wheels and a, and a, and a wash job can make? That quick, this car is already turned around. I just took this thing from a from a low dollar heap to about a $2,500. That's a $2,500 car the way it sits right now. Um, here's another shock and surprise. Like I said, I've got those wheels fit right on there with the adapter, so I'll have to order another set of lug nuts for these as well. Uh, I'll get them on, but you can see the brake hub there. I'll sand that down. I'll grind them down with a wire wheel and then paint them gloss black, stick them back on. We'll get the paint off these tires. These tires are, they're, they're, these are actually new tires. The guy had them on his Camaro and had them just sitting on there for like 30 years. Those tires are 30 years old and the wheels are about 50 years old. But the surprise of the day, this is the original door panel. See how pretty that is? That's American engineering right there. Um, I started cleaning in the front of the car and all this, literally half of this trash can is nothing but leaves. See all the, the, the leaves on the ground? This front seat cover, I thought the seat was just destroyed. Someday, sometime in this car's life, somebody had a seat cover made for it. It was blue and white. Somebody had a seat cover made for it. Well, it was torn and tattered. This is what the original seat actually looks like. So most of this should actually clean up. That's amazing that that seat is in that condition. Amazing. So thank you, Lord. Um, I'll be pulling all this headliner and all out this probably tomorrow, cleaning that out, blessing it with a with some air, and then I'm going to insulate it and then just leave it. That's all I'm going to do is just leave it. Front seats, they're they're good to go. They are good to go. I got to buy a, a floor pan for it. Two hundred twenty dollars for a floor pan. Uh, the dash is uncut and original. Every knob is there. Everything is where it's supposed to be at. The glass in this car is great. Uh, that door over there stuck. I've got it. I've, I've got it earled up right now. Some WD, so it should be. Uh, I'll, I should be able to get it open tomorrow. But night and day difference in this old hot rod. I am. I'm in just in utter amazement how good this thing actually looks now. Put the uh, spears on. They were all in the trunk. I've got every piece of um, every piece for this car except this one little corner piece and this piece. I'm missing two pieces. So if anybody needs, anybody has this piece and this piece for 61 Ford Galaxy, let me know. But that's why I love this car. Look at that. Rockets. Looks like the turbines afterburners. So I'll pull this bumper off, put it in the put it in the three-ton press, press all the dents out of it. But that's this rear end is why I love a 61 Galaxy. Um, once I get the engine transmission, it'll bring it down four inches in the front, and I'll go with a taller set of tires in the back to get it up a little bit. Side pops, yes sir, side pops, redneck it. But that's my new project, guys. I've got three or four people that are on this like like peanut butter on jelly so hopefully this thing goes the next day or so somebody's actually just messaged and says i i want your boat so hopefully we can run with this this boat sells and i'll find a ford motor and transmission hopefully a 429 thunder jet slap in it uh or maybe a 390 tina don't want me to get a four speed in it because she wants to drive it and that's understandable but uh, I doubt that I'll be the one to do everything to this car. This car will probably live here before before I have anything to do with it. Uh, I'm just, I don't think I'm the final owner of this car. I would love to be, but I don't have the money and I gotta get this houseboat built. And I, that's why I need your help to build it. Everything that you, every dime you see me spend is an investment to bring it back out. So this right here is my bank account right now. That was my bank account. I, 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 put money in the bank that's the bank so when i'm ready, ready to look at withdrawal i pull that lock off and somebody else can have it this is a bank account whenever it's time to go then i'll pull that money right back out so that's that's what i do that's my job so everybody out there saying get a job i make more than you do 
want more than most of you guys are bitching when you're you're at home telling your mommy and daddy to make you a hot pocket. I'm out here doing while you're sitting there complaining. You you you're beating on me for what? I think it's jealousy. I think it's jealousy. Remember that bumper? How bad it was? It's only down about two inches now. I've got a. I'm gonna hit it one more time with the jack. And probably leave it there overnight tomorrow. But uh, that looks a thousand percent better because it was it was pointed all the way down to here. So uh, it's complete. It's almost done. I've about done all the body work to this thing. I'm gonna do besides the floor pans because it's gonna be a rusty, musty babe. Because I ain't gonna do nothing else with it. I'm just gonna stick a motor and transmission in, do, rewire it. Won't need but uh, five wires to the engine and then get the lights and all wired up with, which is nothing to do. I've wired up 20 hundred cars. <laughs> 20 hundred. How you like that? Get the trash out, son. Trash day tomorrow. Anyway, I'm Stuart Pitt Long. I'm beat. I'm wore out. I am tired. I'm going to get a personalized tag for that thing. I'm going to say con. Just to, just to make fun of all the morons out there. Con, man. <laughs> you guys have a good day. God bless you. I love you. Jesus loves you, too. Like, share, and subscribe. If not, but for the car content, share it with your friends. Hey, this guy's building a boat. He builds cars. He builds everything. I, I, I can't get over all the comments of people that, that one hateful person the other day. I can't wait to see you bought all that trash on the bottom of the lake that you say is going to float. Can you believe that people in our society hope and wish for someone's failure? That's a, that's a sign of a sick mind and depraved heart. I'm Stuart Pitt on Mr. Hardy's Citizen. Like, share, and subscribe, please. I'm, I'll never get over the algorithm. They got it out for me. I'll, I'll never be able to get the voice out there without your help. And if you guys can't even push the like button, what else am I supposed to do? I'm just going to keep, keep trying to take care of people that don't care. Have a good day. Hey guys, Sir Pete Lomas, targeted citizen. And one of those days, not one, not one for the record books by any means. It started off not good at all. Not good at all. Um, I was just being, it was too much of a distraction trying to, to help. I've always had I've always had a problem saying no to people. People ask me for help and I'm just more than willing to just go do it. And that's a weakness of mine. I just don't I've always wanted to please people. I always wanted to make people happy. Not only that, I've just always wanted to help. I've always wanted to help and uh my buddy <laughs> he uh knows that. And when I didn't, when I don't want to answer the phone, he'll just show up at the house and knock on the door. So uh, I love him, taught him I loved him, but it just uh, I just can't I can't be over there helping him when I've got too many things to do. I've got to build a houseboat, um, and in the middle of that, I've got to put I got to put a sailboat together, and in the middle of that, I've got to start building this Ford. In the middle of that, I need to work on Sweetie's car again because the vandalism, and then on the middle on top of that. Uh, the front brake line has been cutting on my Ranger, so I've got about 20 different projects. So, uh, yeah, my time is chewed slap up. So, just want to give a quick little debriefing of the day for those who are interested, because many people actually are. I'm going to show you a picture, and then you're going to understand why I chose the car that I chose. This is what a 61 Ford Galaxy looks like. That's why. I chose to buy that car because that is the sexiest rear end. If it was uh, Sir Mix-a-Lot here, he'd be saying, baby got back. So uh, that's the reason I chose this car because I've always loved a 61 Ford and those are the wheels that are on it currently. Here's the front end. This is what one looks like when it's in good condition. Mine is not in good condition. And I don't, I, and I like it that way. I enjoy it not being in good condition. But as you can see, another set of craggers, another set of craggers. Why? Because that's the number one choice of wheels for hot rodders. I'm old school. I should have been born in the 60s. In the 50, well, actually, I should have been born late 40s, early 50s. That's when I should have been born. Um, but more than likely, I would have went to Vietnam and got my butt blown off. <laughs> so thank the Lord for that. Look out, God. Look out, son. Move, buddy. Thank you. Um, so... 
it was under my terms that I left my buddies and not under his. He's, I kind of left him hanging, but I had a choice. I had to get, had to be done with it. Ford, I came home today and Mason has already put 5,000 miles on my car. 5,000 miles he put on my car, dreaming. I come home, he's just sitting there in the seat. So, um, whatever it takes to keep your child, children engaged, that's what you have to do. It's your job to do that. Even though I want to pinch his little head off every three minutes because of him doing something silly. I, I helped create this monster. Uh, I used to be bullied in school and all the rich kids because I was a poor kid. All these great, and I'm, I'm telling you, when I tell you I went to school with rich people, I'm not talking about the average rich people. I'm talking, son, don't throw the trash on the ground when you got a trash can right there. Pick it up one time, touch it once, throw it in the trash can. Don't throw it on the ground so then you got to come over there and pick it up again. Remember, work smart, not okay. So, they bullied me in school, called me Auto Man. Auto Man. That was, you know, that was the, that was going because I knew everything about cars. Um, so, you know, didn't bother me. Ever, all my wall in my bedroom was just covered in Ford Mustangs. 60. I loved the 67 fastback, uh, but my favorite was 69 and 70, either Boss 302 or Mach 1. Of course, that's the one, the Boss 429. That's the number one greatest car in the world to me, besides the Red Runner I almost had. I've always had an eye for big fours. My very, very first car was a 1969 Ford LTD four-door 351 Windsor, triple black, had a vinyl top. It was a dark metallic blue when I got it, but I, I, I was painting cars hot rod black before hot rod black was cool. I helped build that car culture. You don't have to believe me, but you can go back and look at my photos. And you'll see, before everybody started on Hot Rod Black, I did it. I did it on my motorcycle before anybody else was doing it on their motorcycle. And then that, shortly after that is when uh, these real bright colors came out. I built my 67 Volkswagen. I built it with 1976 Porsche Lime Green. So I started that. Here are all the perks going by. So let's get to the Ford. All this is the mechanics the mechanisms from inside this door that would not open yesterday would not open you know a lot of people like sunroofs in their vehicles i like floor i like sun floors <laughs> so this is just needs simple pans now somebody say oh that car's total this junk it's actually not this is this is best case scenario somebody looks like they'd actually attempted to do a patch uh, but this is good. This is good. All we got to do now is pull the seats, pull this door sill out, and the replacement panels for this car, I think for the front half is 220, and the back half is, uh, I think it's right at 220, or I can get the whole pan. The problem with the whole pan is the shipping really cost you a lot more, so I'll probably just do, uh, I don't even know if I'm going to do pans yet. I've got enough. I could just rig it. I don't want to rig it. I hate when people rig cars, but it would get it solid enough to be able to enjoy. Um, we'll just have to see. Got so many people interested in my boat today, so hopefully that thing's out the door. And if it's out the door, then I can go buy me a uh, wire welder and I can buy the pans I need, get them in here. I've already got researched. I'm already researching on, a, I've got a couple engines that I found. I found a 390 and a four speed, I think for $800, which is more than I want to pay. I'd rather just buy a truck with a mud running engine and transmission in it. Then I can scrap off the truck, sell off the truck what I don't need and then scrap the rest and then keep what I do. Uh, but anyway, this is how I was looking today. Uh, got this whole door mechanism out. Now I've got to figure out how to put all this stuff back together. And unfortunately I had to drill a lot of these screws out. Had to drill uh, right under. Had to drill out that one. I uh, had to drill that one right there out. So I mean, it's just that's par for the course. Uh, I took this door off and that dent right there and fixed it. it looks like window regulated there. Uh, took this door off and had to fix that. And, and in the process of that, I put two, three little dents in this fender, which uh, I did not think that that it would just. I didn't think it would hurt it that bad. I didn't hurt, think it hurt it that much. I mean, it really didn't hurt it that much, but I see it, and that drives me mad. crazy because this is original paint. Original paint is what they call patina, but I was driving cars like this before it was cool. So uh, that's the plan. Hopefully tomorrow my wheel stuff, my uh, lugs will be done. I've got to get a set of lugs for this and for my Ranger. Um, 
but this thing's coming along. You know, I'm, it looks like destruction, but it's, it's, it's truly not. This is what has to be done. So I've got that door over there shutting good. And like I said, I've got this one opening. Uh, this lock mechanism here is, is, is sprung. That what was wrong. That's what was wrong with it all the, the whole time. So uh, I'll probably have to just get a latch and latch it on the inside, just like a little door and that latch on the inside until I get the mechanism. So I've got to find all that stuff. This door is actually a very good door. Uh, that rocker down there is, I think it was 320 for that rocker, which is extremely expensive. I think I can do better than that. But this side is actually good shape. It's got one little hole down there on that. And then the one, both doors have got this hole, so I gotta take a patch piece on the inside and then weld it from this side, and then a little bit of putty. If I do that, I don't. I'm not. I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy. Uh, I'll make it structurally sound, as in I'll, I'll, I'll do. I'll do either patch pans and floor pans, or I'll do an actual floor pan, the real floor pan in it. I'm the guy that does the brakes, gets it wired, and gets it running. I'm that guy. I don't. I'm, I'm done making cars pretty. I'm just. I've done it for so many years. And it's just, once you get a car fixed up the way you want it, then being a targeted individual, it's going to get vandalized. It's going to get destroyed. And then you can't enjoy it because you got to be careful with it. I want to put a freaking hot rod motor in this thing. I want to bowl the tires off of it. And I just want to make noise. And the way it always happens for me, I don't want to say unfortunately, but fortunately as well is... 99.9% .9 of the time I always sell it before I get it to where I want it anyway because I don't know I've just had an eye for vehicles I know how to make them look I know how to make them sit I know how to make them sound and and, and people kind of enjoy my style so um, it is what it is it's an old car but there ain't no freaking ain't no Kia in the world has got that kind of class no and if you've seen the video earlier of the car I'm talking about that that's that's hip that's that's the deal so as mason cleans all this mess up it's almost time for church so uh this another, i'm a spent man i'm, I'm big i just man i got this boat and i ain't even been out on the way yeah i'm so busy and and and, I, and, I, and when i'm not so busy then i'm, I'm down and i can't move i just want to go and do my bait and it just seems like the the the, 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 the gang stalkers are doing everything in their power to roadblock here roadblock there speed bump here roadblock there detour 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 anything they can do to slow me down is what's what's happening so um and as you can see again this little bush my beautiful fatinias were absolutely gorgeous last week and the blight from where they've been weakened the blight has absolutely killed them again look all the leaves on the ground also the neighbors came over on my property again again and this is what they did they dug a ditch all the way up see because the property line's actually way up there at the top and straight down but like always they came on my property um, and I don't mind this is whatever they want to do see they didn't even grade this I, I guess they think that's great at piling Water, dirt up around there but you can't put dirt on a foundation like that that's against that's that's against that's against code and look look at the bottom shingle the bottom shingle is that long and how crooked that is buyer beware anybody wants to purchase this house you've got a you got another thing coming look at all the crooked windows none of the window the front window tilts down the second window tilts back this one tilts back and this one tilts back the whole house the whole foundation is rotted out from under but you know what for some reason illegal immigrants in our country get away with that look at the soffit look how ruined the soffit is i would not man i see the lumps in the vinyl siding see all those lumps that's where there's a nail head back in there i wouldn't man i tell i wouldn't i wouldn't want to burn that house down and try to get the money out of it but here it is they blocked me off this is where my drain comes through so I gotta cut into that and they'll probably raise hell about that. But they, they cut a ditch around the whole back like that's gonna stop the water. <laughs> you see, in other countries like Mexico and, and this guy, he's from Colombia, but the people he hires is are Mexicans. There aren't building codes. There's not you know, they don't they don't have a, a, a they don't they don't have anything to go by. There's nobody that checks up on them. They just go out there and build whatever they want and it's okay. In America, we have building codes for a reason. Uh, 
not only generate revenue, but to keep people safe. You know what I mean? So there's nothing safe about that house. I mean, it's it's already it's already the foundation's already settled another three inches since they moved in. And that's the vent right there. It used to be a, a, a trail coming right through here. You can still kind of see that trail through there, where that robot thing would come all the way into my house from in here. Yeah. If you guys want to hear some more stories of, of, of when I was being terrorized, please just leave a comment and I'll I'll, I'll see what I can bring up. Uh, it's very traumatic going through all that stuff again. Um, I mean, it's just terror being terrorized is is the facts of the matter. So uh, I got to get him going. I love you guys. Um, just pray for me. I, I need all the patience I can get. You guys have a God. Just, just have a, have a have a good day. God bless.